Alright, so this video got sent to me. Uh, it came out about two weeks ago from a guy called Tactical Bacon Productions. Um, I was asked to react to it because apparently it's going to have some ideas in here that I'm not going to agree with. So I'm going to go ahead and react to it now and I'll give you my opinions as it's playing. I haven't actually seen it yet, so we'll see what they have to say. Obviously, I'm very opinionated when it comes to Mortal Kombat. I was not too kind to Mortal Kombat 11, but we'll see what this guy has to say. Yes, you read the video's title correctly, and I know there's going to be a lot of angry knee-jerk responses from people who just see the title and don't even watch the video, but... Do you know what? I didn't even read the title. Mortal Kombat needs to tone down the violence. I mean, right off the bat, just no. Unless this guy has a compelling argument, I can't see how I would agree with that. If Mortal Kombat tones down its violence, I don't know how far down he's talking. If, he turn, if they turn it down too much, it's going to lose its place in the world, really. I mean, Mortal Kombat is known for its violence. But I'll see what he has to say. It's going to have to be a pretty compelling argument because I just can't see a good reason to not continue pushing the level of violence in the game. For the love of the Elder Gods, just hear me out. Let me explain. There's a reason for this video's topic. And just to make sure I know the people commenting have watched the video, I'm going to include a code word at the end of this video. If your comment does not include the code word, I will assume you haven't watched the whole video and have heard what I have to say. That's so first, idea. let me digress. Despite the fact that I quite like Mortal Kombat as a whole, MK11 came out before I had rediscovered my dormant love for the franchise. But when Mortal Kombat 11 was in development, I saw a press release that stated they were done making all the female characters leather-clad titty monsters. I felt the same way about this then as I do now. It's something- Before he says how he feels about it, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. I don't understand why it was such an issue them to have hypersexualized female characters in there when it's a game about over the top gore it doesn't make sense like do we really have more of an issue with scantily clad women in a game about sorcerers and witches and monsters and all this shit than than like the actual vi i mean the violence if you were going to nitpick anything about mortal kombat and the negative effects it might have on the world even though it's it's not it's not me saying that it is it would be the violence it wouldn't it wouldn't be the the big boobs or like, you know, what Melina was wearing in MK9, which I'm guessing is what he's going to show in a second. Like, it didn't really make sense to me. Personally, you know, Mortal Kombat's like, it's like, I want it to return to how it used to be. MK11 just went a route I wasn't too happy with. MK10 story, again, not very happy with. It kind of peaked to MK9. ...that I'm of two minds about. On one hand, whatever. If I wanted to get my jingles, there are about a billion better places to go than an official release. There was only so far True. they were able to go with Mortal Kombat <laughs> without is. pushing the age rating to adults only, which would never happen. So in that regard, I was ambivalent towards the change. But on the other hand, I questioned why they even felt the need to do it. It seemed very performative to me, because why in a series where you can chop people up in a million different ways and see all the gory details, would scantily clad women be the line you draw? You know what? Literally, <laughs> literally what I just said. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. It, he's, he's right, it does seem performative. Because of the whole, like, you know, we're very touchy about sexuality these days for whatever reason, but then we, on the other hand, we hypersexualize things as well. Like, we're in this weird space right now. Um, I don't, I, I didn't understand it myself, especially the kind of game that Mortal Kombat is. And also, the, the men were still walking around bare chested and all that, so it was, it was kind of odd to me. It did seem like they were trying to appease a crowd that isn't there. I don't think that crowd exists for Mortal Kombat, but. No, no, Mortal Kombat 11 sold like crazy, apparently, so... I mean, it just seemed like a deliberate attempt at good press on a topic that seemed laughable when you look at the context. I think it's just a reinforcement of the dichotomy of our society. We can deal with violence better than we can deal with sexuality. You can show all the blood and guts you want, but God help you if you show a nipple. And somehow that attitude bleeds into Thank things you. like Mortal Kombat, where disingenuous is an understatement. Because personally, looking into it, I think the violence is actually the bigger issue that needs to be addressed. And I know what you're all going to say. What the hell are you talking about? Mortal Kombat is all about the violence. And granted, that's true. Mortal Kombat became popular off the back of its mature content. So popular, in fact, that it forced games to regulate and create a rating system. And I'm not saying this as somebody who's squeamish, either. I friggin' love ultraviolence. It's one of my favorite things in creative works. I'm a sucker for gory excess. I'm not sure what that says about me, but hey, we're all a bit weird. But it's only recently that the violence and I don't think it's weird. I mean, I know he's joking, but I know some people do find it weird. I've had that conversation with people as well, where I like the over-the-top violence in Mortal Kombat. Like, I want them to continue pushing the envelope because the creative ways that they come up uh, come up with to kill these characters is pretty cool. And 
it's the reaction that you that you get from those sort of things it's just overwhelming hype i know that might sound messed up to some people but i was there on the release of m or the when they first showed off mk11 properly at camden in coco which is in london and people were going nuts i'm pretty sure it was baraka that they showed off first and people were going absolutely crazy when he pissed whoever's head uh, with whoever's brain with his claw they were going wild for that so i can only imagine that with hyper realistic graphics that's going to be even better mortal kombat has become so gratuitous that it's become a bit of a problem as a fairly recent fan of mortal kombat this is something that's become very clear to me as i've looked into it because in doing various bits of research i've come to discover that netherrealm is kind of an awful place to work allegedly toxic environment crunch yada 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 but the part that depresses me the most are the stories but that, that that's happened with loads of video game studios i don't think it's just a never wrong thing I don't think it's fair to just single them out although his video is about mortal kombat to be fair to him but i heard that about who are the guys that make uncharted again naughty dog i heard that about them i've heard that about other companies so you know it is what it is of employees at nether realm being diagnosed with ptsd and other such mental disorders due to the violent content in the games they make this is old news now but i still feel it worth addressing you see, as technology has progressed, it's meant that Mortal Kombat has had to continually raise the bar as far as gratuitous violence and gore. Because yes, that's what the series is known for, so they have to go further and further every time so they don't look like they're stagnating. It makes sense in theory, but that combined with the ever-present inching towards total graphical realism has resulted in NetherRealm employees having to look up detailed videos and pictures of grievous bodily harm and use that as inspiration to model and animate every detailed and clinical deconstruction of the human body. You can see how that would be traumatizing to some people, and that is certainly the case. It's resulted in at least one person at NetherRealm Studios reportedly having a lessening quality of life for the sake of their job. And in my opinion, if one person, even one, has to suffer, then it's not worth it. I don't know if I completely agree with him there. I mean, yes, the graphics are becoming more and more intense with these games. We're getting to the point where things are becoming photorealistic, so naturally... With something like Mortal Kombat, the knock-on effect is going to be, you probably are going to be looking up things to mimic that, but that that comes with the, the nature of the game. Like if you can't handle the smoke, you've got to get out of the kitchen. I know that might sound a bit heartless to say, but in, in this day and age where the graphics are being pushed to like hyper-realistic, photo-realistic uh, graphics, and that's the kind of game Mortal Kombat's in, and that's the direction it's heading in, you probably go work for another studio. I know that studios and, and getting into the gaming industry is extremely difficult, it's oversaturated, it's very difficult to come in, especially if you're someone new to the industry. I know that from friends trying to break in, but at the same time, I guarantee you if Mortal Kombat starts to stagnate in its quality, and its quality largely I think is derived from the level of violence they're able to put out, I don't think the game's going to sell as well, which will result in less people having jobs. I mean, if the game doesn't continue to push the envelope and doesn't continue to take to the next level, it might affect everyone. So yeah, maybe one person does have to suffer uh, and it might help everyone keep their jobs. Obviously that might be an extreme take, but I don't know if I like the idea of toning down the violence because people can't deal with the work environment. That seems a bit odd to me. Also, is there no other way that they can sort of get that hyper-realistic look? Do they have to look up really violent, real videos of people being killed or people being hurt? Is there no other way they can go about that at all? Are you telling me everything that deals with extreme gore doesn't have any way to go about portraying that gore without looking up something that is real? As in like what cartel beheading videos or I don't know, people in hospitals that have undergone botched surgeries, like do you have to look that stuff up? I don't know if that's a requirement and even a valid point to make. I wanted to bring this up right off the bat because I feel that this is the smoking gun of the topic. This story has been disputed in various cases, but I really don't see the benefit in making this up. The fact that people are suffering for Mortal Kombat to be what it is, quite frankly, should not be necessary. Especially when you take into consideration that it wasn't until MK9 that things even started to become this over the top. When you look at the fatalities of Yor going back as far as the first few games and even up to the end of the Midway era, most fatalities were over in a flash and weren't excessively brutal. Some of them even got into the realms of parody, like Quan Chi ripping off your leg and beating you to death with it. Or in Mortal Kombat 3, people exploding with three skeletons worth of bones. That's so absurd, it's funny. And even then, if you were to demake a lot of the more gruesome aspects of the modern games into the early digitized sprite era, or even into the 3D era, it's still- Bro, that fatality is wild. 
Bro, he cracked her jaw and pulled it off. I'm sorry, yeah, but we can't go backwards. I'm sorry. Like, just that, like, put a smile on my face. I know some of you are like, this guy's sick in the head, but this is what Mortal Kombat is known for. It is known for go. And the thing is, is that if you look back at the old Mortal Kombat games, like he's saying, yes, some of them are very comical, but as time went on, they became more and more violent as the graphics allowed them to be. So you had the characters exploding and there's like three or four legs on the floor. And yeah, it was funny. But then you get to Mortal Kombat 4 and they're, they're kind of pushing it a little bit more. Yes, they are still comical. You get to Deadly Alliance, they've pushed it a bit more. They've pushed it a bit more in Deception. Armageddon, you can create your own fatality. It's kind of lame. I mean, you can still do crazy shit, but it was kind of lame. Forget about that one. MK9 pushes it even further. And then obviously we get to where we are now, where the MK11 fatalities are the most grotesque ones, as they should be. The graphics have allowed them to go in that route. It's not to say that you can't have comical fatalities, but I don't know if I like the idea of toning down something that has made the game so popular. Mortal Kombat's known for its fatalities and it's known for upping the fatalities of the game that came before it. Well, would it be as bad? Because on one hand, sprites and crude 3D models have enough separation from reality that you can't have the same detail that you would in a more contemporary game. Therefore, you wouldn't have to do the same amount of rigorous research in order to achieve that detail. A complex sprite animation or crude 3D animation is never going to be as shocking as a real or almost real equivalent. And also, I'd imagine a skilled person could probably make these sprite animations or these 3D animations in a couple of days max. So even if somebody was disturbed by this back in the day, they probably wouldn't have to look at it for very long. But with modern technology, it takes weeks and an entire team to achieve these complex CGI animations. These animations don't just get made themselves in a vacuum. I'd imagine that if you're looking at these for weeks on end, shooting for total realism and don't have the context of doing it for fun like the average player might, it probably gets burnt into your skull in all the wrong ways. And for somebody who's not prepared for that, yeah, it's definitely not good for you. And I'm sure that some people might say that these developers need to know what they're getting into before accepting the job with Netherrealm, but guess what? Sometimes a job is a job and you can't get picky. I have a friend who- Yeah, but by the same token, a job is a job, so do your job. Yeah, I understand. Having to look at grotesque images might be a bit much, but we all do things in our jobs that we don't like. I gotta tell you right now, I think most people would rather be looking at grotesque images in the pursuit of making a good Mortal Kombat game than serving coffee at 5 in the morning to a bunch of belligerent, annoying people. I don't know, it seems a little bit entitled. This is, this is what comes with the gig. Violence comes with the gig. This isn't Street Fighter, it's not Tekken. You're looking at different things here. I think people that work at Netherrealm do need to grow a bit of a backbone if that's the case. Now I for one don't believe the story about the person having PTSD. Everyone is so desensitized to the things that are on the internet. You can go on YouTube and find crazy videos and I'm not going to tell people what to search but there are certain things you can put into the search bar and YouTube has completely missed them. The moderation has completely missed them. Those videos are monetized as well and they are 100% insane and shouldn't be on YouTube but they're there. People know how to find them. My point is, is that the internet has desensitized us. I just don't believe that people were having PTSD. I, I'm sorry, like if there is someone out there that works at Neverum that did have that, then fair enough. But it, it just seems like, with, you know, the day and age we live in, it seems more like a PR stunt, if anything. Graduated from some game design school a while back. I don't remember which one. And he's had interviews with four or five big game developers, including Rockstar Games. Despite getting that far that many times, none have offered him an actual position. So what that tells me is that finding work in the industry, especially for a newcomer, is a pain in the ass. So some of these people probably just took the offer of work at Netherrealm because they were the first or possibly only studio to offer them a job. If you're just trying to get by in the industry you've been trained in, you don't deserve to be scarred for life. It's not about knowing what you're getting into, it's about being able to survive. And sometimes you need to take a job that you wouldn't necessarily take otherwise, or don't fit optimally at, in order to survive. So even if this person or people already had pre-existing issues that were there before they took the job, and this story is the development simply worsening those pre-existing conditions, that still comes back to the fact that it's entirely possible they didn't necessarily want the job at that specific studio. And even that's that's just tough. That is tough. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound like a heartless person, but I'm like that's ridiculous I, I can't stand behind that point if i was signing up to be in the next mortal kombat mortal kombat 12 we know full well that the game is going to again push the envelope of of what is acceptable in a video game and they're going to push it as far as they 
possibly can. I imagine there's some fatalities that get left on the cutting floor. But I wouldn't sit there and, and pretend like I don't know what I'm getting into or try to have the game toned down so certain people don't go home and feel like their brain is melting. Like I, I, I saw a video of a Starbucks employee the other day crying about something that he's required to do. If you sign up for a job and you don't know what you're getting yourself into and they don't explicitly tell you that's one thing, you can handle that however you see fit, you'd have grounds to. But if you sign the contract knowing full well what you got into and they explain it to you and we all know what Mortal Kombat is, I'm sorry but I just, I don't feel sorry for you. To work on a game like Mortal Kombat, you've already got to be in an incredi incredibly privileged position in your life. Not to say you didn't work to get there, but just the ability to even get to that point to be put through school and to be have the resources for netherrealm to pick you up to work on their game like, and you're complaining because you're looking at a bunch of images i'm sorry but then you know go work on a peppa pig game if it's too hot that's just it's not that's not an excuse even if that were the case it's not a matter of whether or not they should have taken the job it's a matter of whether or not people are suffering to make these games and that's simply unacceptable regardless of any way you swing it Come that's on. the end of the discussion for me no. and i don't think it should be an unpopular take i think that's just basic human decency the same thing applies for The Last of Us 2, where similar stories came out. That was another case of people suffering to make a game. It doesn't matter which studio it is, it's horrible regardless. I think that kind of brings- Yeah, but there's two, there's two different things. If you're talking about working people to the bone, and you're making them stay beyond hours that they're contracted to, and they can't go home to their families, which is what I heard was happening at Naughty Dog, then yeah, if that's happening at NRS, then I'm on your side. You're not contracted to work that time. Yes, obviously with these sort of projects, there are gonna be times where you need to put in the extra mile. But if it's to the point that I heard The Last of Us was where people weren't even sleeping or anything, then unless they're compensating you for that, like handsomely, then I I stand behind you 100%. If I, like with the Starbucks employee, I would stand behind them as well if they were contracted to work eight hours and Starbucks were like, we need you to stay for 12 hours and then you weren't even compensated for it. I wouldn't cry on TikTok about it, but I'd understand why you'd be angry. But this is different. You're talking about them having to look at grotesque images to replicate them in the fatalities. I am sure Ed Boon and the team would have made them aware that that was going to be one of the processes to achieve what they wanted in Mortal Kombat 11, and I assume for Mortal Kombat 12. If they didn't tell them and they had them sign contracts and then they told them to go look up grotesque images, that's one thing. But if it was in the contract beforehand and you signed it, I'm sorry. But you signed the contract. It's just, that's just the way, it is. that's how the cookie crumbles. ...into question whether or not this is all necessary. You know what I mean? The escalation of these things happen because of an attitude of, we can do it, so why shouldn't we? Nobody ever really stops to consider if it's really a necessary inclusion for the end product. Would the depiction of intestines being ripped out piece by piece be the thing that pushes a 9 out of 10 into a 10 out of 10 for anybody? And while it may not appear like it, it's entirely possible to be brutal without being so over the top that you have to subject your employees to these harsh conditions. Let's just take a look at Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, a game where the fatalities have a bit of a mixed reception, but it's a good showcase of potential creativity. In that game, the heroes have what are called heroic brutalities, moves that aren't going to kill you, but are going to end a fight no doubt. Some of these were kind of lame, but Green Lanterns was one of the best fight ending moves not only in the game, but in the series. He grabs you with the Green Lantern Ring and crushes you in a bubble. It's brutal, it's quick, it's effective, and most importantly, it's not gratuitous. Not a single drop of blood is spilt, not a single limb severed, but it gets its point across incredibly and would make even the most jaded player wince without falling into the same issues that recent games have fallen into. Garrus in Mortal Kombat- Gotta have a little bit of pushback there. That will not work in Mortal Kombat 12 or any Mortal Kombat games that don't feature prominent characters like Batman, Green Lantern, Superman, whoever. Mortal Kombat vs DC was a successful game, yes. But if you put those, those heroic fatalities or whatever they were called, heroic brutalities, in a Mortal Kombat game, and that is the level of violence that you're offering people, given the fact that the level of violence you offered before was so high, what do you think is going to happen? Do you really think it's going to translate to good sales? Do you really think that the fact that DC superheroes didn't play a part in people overlooking it? You know, having a game where Mortal Kombat, are, Mortal Kombat characters are fighting DC superheroes, do you think that might have been the reason why people were able to overlook it? Because I guarantee if you put those dog shit fatalities in the next Mortal Kombat game, people are not going to be happy. You, you do that. Let the trailers drop and look at people's reactions in the comment section. And word of mouth is very, very powerful. Guarantee you that will not translate to good sales. 
You can get away with it in a crossover game because those characters are so popular, people are more than willing to overlook things. I was able to overlook it and make no mistake, that flash fatality that you just showed was like ridiculously crap. That was laughably stupid. And most of them in that game are. They only survived because it had DC there. That is the only reason. Eleven could have had a fatality like this, crushing you in his stance. And honestly, I think the whole heroic brutality thing is something that Netherrealm should really go back to. Back when Mortal Kombat really only had the tower mode and didn't try for any more characterization, it might have fit for every character to wantonly kill their opponents in ridiculously over-the-top ways. But now that you're attempting more in-depth storytelling, it just seems odd to me that Johnny Cage would be so keen to rip open someone's chest cavity and do a parody of The Shining. A character's fatality should be more in line with their personality rather than just being gory for the sake of being gory. People like Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Jax Briggs, Liu Kang, and even Raiden should have this in mind. It makes sense from a fight psychology standpoint for them to have quote-unquote fatalities that incapacitate their opponents in brutal ways but doesn't kill them, because they're the good guys. They should be above killing unless absolutely necessary. I mean, that's how it goes down in the story most times. I'm this guy's trying to suck the fun out of the games. I'm sorry, I get your point there. They're the heroes in the stories, they don't really kill to the, to the level that the bad characters do. I understand that. But then you're gonna have to tone down their entire fighting style. Like everything about them will have to be toned down. It's not just that, it'll be their special moves, their supers. Everything about them will have to be toned down heavily. And I just think it's just unnecessary in a game that champions extreme violence. And again, that's what this is known for. So yeah, in the story, you can be consistent with them not being killers like people like Kano or Scorpion. In the gameplay, do you really wanna do that? you really want to do that? And I'm just talking about the gameplay. The fatalities are another thing. I still don't agree. The Shining fatality was a great addition. It fits Johnny per Johnny Cage's personality well. It's like taking their personality up to a thousand. Like if they were going to kill someone, that is how it would look. Giving them heroic brutalities, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm sorry, yeah, like, I can't see a universe where that would be acceptable for people. I'm pretty sure there'll be pushback for that. How many times has Kano canonically skirted death because of this? It makes sense to me if Jax Briggs, for example, whom is a special force operative whose moveset is modeled after professional wrestling, incapacitates his opponents using something like a burning hammer, breaks their neck, maybe knocks them out, but doesn't kill them. Or how about this? Shao Kahn broke Kotal Kahn's back using what is basically a leaping torture rack. I refuse to call it a rack attack. That could be a good heroic brutality for Jax, just with a little bit more fanfare to set it up. Then there's Raiden, for example, who can use lightning in any number of creative ways to incapacitate but not kill. Or how about Lu friggin' Kang? His cartwheel uppercut combo from the first game is arguably the first heroic brutality in the series. I think it's an interesting creative challenge to retain the characteristically brutal nature of the series without being gratuitous. That way the developers don't need to suffer in the future. And even the characters who would kill, you don't have to be so crazy with it. For example, Kotal Kahn. I always thought that one grapple attack where he bathes in your blood is a bit too unsurvivable to just be- Dude, no. Come on, man. You were trying to suck the fun out of this game. Like, these moves are fun to look at. And again, you're probably looking at me going, this guy's sick in the head. But, like, wait, you- what, 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 Okay, let's see, what, what does he want to replace it with? ...be a standard attack. What if you were to alter that to just make it his fatality? Or if you want to get a little bit more ridiculous, what if he summons a sunbeam to bake you alive until you melt or explode into giblets Ark of the Covenant style until nothing remains but a skeleton? If you do it right, you won't need to model anything that will require research into the less pleasant parts of the anatomy. Or even Shao Kahn, who relishes in brutalizing his opponents, could stand to be a little bit more to the point. Like, you know what he does to Garrus during the Aftermath DLC? Just repeatedly hits his head until it's a pile of giblets? That could very easily be a straightforward and to the point fatality. Or if you want to be a little bit more ridiculous with it, how about he sticks you with a spear and then sticks the spear into the ground to tee you up, then uses his hammer like a golf club and your head like a golf ball so we can speedrun The Last of Us 2. Huh. Second mention of that game in this video. I must just have it on my mind. What I'm trying to erase The Last of Us 2 from my memory, bro. Please stop bringing it up. Once again, finishers that are brutal but don't require you to model grievous bodily harm on the level of what we've been seeing since 2011. The problem is though, Netherrealm has gone so far that if they don't have something equal to or greater than what they've already had previously in the next game, the average person would look at it and say, what the hell, this is lame. Because the average person isn't looking into the context of why things are operating in a certain way. Netherrealm has unfortunately poisoned the well, so it might be too little too late. But I still think it's worth a try. 
To be clear, I say all of this while also being someone who enjoys ultraviolence. God of War is my favorite franchise, and God of War is gratuitous violence the series. But for me, it's all about the context. If Mortal Kombat could exist as it is right now and have everyone be happy and content, then that would be the ideal universe to occupy. But I would also like $10,000, a shot of whiskey, and a license to kill. But unfortunately, some things just aren't in the cards. And for better or worse, I don't see things changing anytime soon. As much as I preach, it's not going to change anything, unfortunately. But a man can dream. And a man can attempt to change the world, but a man should also probably get some rest. So now that I'm done here, the code word is legislature. Mostly dis disagree with this take. I think that this style of development will probably push the game to do poorly. And then the, the production, the quality of the game will probably drop and we'll probably not get DLC. I think part of the reason that Mortal Kombat is so popular is the fact that we all know the gameplay isn't always the best. Even in a competitive setting, it's pretty lackluster. I mean, I've pointed out multiple times on my channel why the game just doesn't do very well in a competitive scene and why it dies off pretty quickly. There's loads of like balance problems, but Mortal Kombat does well because of its presentation. And in, in saying that, the presentation is helped heavily by the amount of violence that they're able to push and how far they're willing to push the envelope. I don't think scaling it back, introducing heroic brutalities, or trying to find canonical ways to make characters behave instead of having a lot of fun with the fatalities. Like you can tell, they have a lot of fun when they're doing those fatalities, especially what Johnny Cage's ones. They look like a lot of fun to put together. It looks like they, they go through a lot of different things that they can parody. I just don't know if I believe that people are being negatively affected by being able to go work for Warner Brothers and Netherrealm in developing one of the biggest franchises that has ever existed. It just doesn't seem believable. But then again, it is 2022 and we do live amongst the most fragile people that the West has ever produced. So maybe, maybe he's maybe he's right. But then, do you want to cater to that sort of uh, person, or are you trying to get the best product possible? I don't know. I don't co-sign this at all. I think this is a bad idea, and I think that they should continue to push the envelope and wow us with what they can come out with next. And if people are being negatively affected by it, I think that you probably shouldn't be working for NetherRealm Studios the same way I told that Starbucks employee, uh, if you can't serve coffee to people, then you probably shouldn't be working on Starbucks. It's really as simple as that. I don't think Mortal Kombat needs to take 10 steps back in terms of violence. I think they should take 10 steps forward. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to uh, leave me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Going to try growing it again this year and next year. And yeah, we'll react to some more content later on. Take care. Peace.